guys. Welcome to another episode of Costa Rica Crypto. Matt here, and today I'm talking to a project that's kind of been hot and up and coming and is starting to receive a lot of attention. Uh, I spoke to Dominic before in a previous interview. I'm really happy to have you back, Dominic. We've kind of talked about a lot of exciting uh, things, but I know there's been a lot of new developments since then. So everything from your upcoming share drop to uh, you've got an online conference coming up, I think on the 30th of the month. You guys are announcing new VPs and you've got a ton kind of happening in the background. But before we dip into all that and we really explore all that, and do you want to kind of just give a quick summation of who you are and how the project works for anybody who might not have tuned in previously? Sure. Thanks, Matt. Uh, it's good to be back. So Warbly is a financial services blockchain and we're built around compliance uh, through the, the network level. Uh, through the opportunity for users to go through AML KYC if they want to, and our block producers who have agreed to go through uh, compliance auditing uh, to make sure that we're in line with global financial regulation. And the hope is that we're going to attract businesses that maybe have been on the sidelines uh, to get involved in blockchain and in, in cryptocurrency and build financial services products on our network uh, that will serve uh, not only the Wordly community, but the EOS community as a whole. For sure. And I know that one of the main focuses that people have kind of been speaking about is Wordly as kind of a crypto bridge to fiat. But I also know based on a lot of discussions with you, based on a ton of my own research, that that's kind of like one of the only functions. We'll dip into some of the other things later on in this interview. But how do you see Warbly kind of facilitating this? How is ultimately that going to work? So the, the crypto fiat uh, gateway concept is obviously an important part of what we're trying to do. We anticipate there'll be uh, several products doing that. Uh, we're certainly incubating a, uh, a bank concept, a bank dApp, uh, that will have that ability to allow users to move in and out of crypto and fiat uh, far more easily and cheaper than they do now. Um, but we also anticipate there'll be uh, other people on the chain. We're, we're hoping for it. We're actually, you know, out there looking for it. You know, we want to get a lot of options for for the community to do that. Um, so that that's, that's that part of it. And then, yeah, as you said, there's a lot of other financial services that we anticipate coming on board. For sure. I Here's what really excites me about Warbly. This is what I really like, okay, because I'm always constantly stressing – my private keys, um, I'm always stressing about somebody coming up and taking my stuff. One of the one of the intentions of Wordly is ultimately to create somewhere where you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your private keys. Am I am I right when I say that? How are you guys gonna facilitate that? Like an yeah. yeah, we're we're looking to develop uh, an insured wallet. Uh, we've already talked to insurers. We we have at least one lined up that's willing to do liability insurance. Uh, so that if you want to, and this will be your option, there'll always be the manual option. If you want to download your private keys and manage everything on your own, you'll be able to do that. But we're going to provide this option for people that, you know, are happy to have us uh, manage their private keys for them in a secure environment with an insured product. And then that way users can feel confident leaving their funds in their wallet so that it's easily accessible and they can move them around or hopefully engage with dApps and, and make payments for those services, uh, just like you do now with something like PayPal. I love that. So finally, a way to uh, kind of just, a way to, way to kind of sideswipe the, the, the worrying that a lot of people do about their crypto assets. And I think that's freaking huge. Um, I guess the next question I want to ask you is that, there's, there's a lot of different dApps that are being built. One of the ones that you guys are actually building yourselves are, of course, Gamma Bank, right? Which is like the online crypto kind of bank type deal. Uh, but I also know that the plan is to develop a ton of other dApps on Warbly as well. What are some of the ideas that potentially are being developed or potentially could be could be developed that really excite you? Well, we've, we're look, we have a company that's working on a peer-to-peer -peer insurance platform. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit before the show, but uh, the idea is to kind of decentralize insurance risk um, and, and they're going to do it in a way that, that creates a sort of like actuarial oracles that will assess the risk of the policy, uh, kind of generate a, a rating for it. 
in uh, a potential premium. So for example, if someone was uh, a block producer from mainnet, uh, I've heard that these guys are dying for insurance policies because they do have some liability. Uh, and let's say they want a million dollars worth of insurance, uh, the, the oracles would be able to assess the risk for that policy uh, and say what they think a reasonable annual premium is. And then users would be able to actually back the bond uh, for the million dollars worth of uh, potential uh, liability. Um, so uh, that that's something that's out there. Uh, there's uh, FX trading platforms uh, that are that are interested. Uh, we have at least one that's that's in development. Uh, and also, there's uh, some supply chain actually that's uh, kind of excited because uh, compliance is is kind of something that's not as directly related to supply chain, but it brings a level of legitimacy for these products that they feel a little more uh, in services they feel a little more comfortable with. For sure. I, you know, we spoke a little bit earlier too, and I mentioned that I was the owner of a small business. And one of the things that, that I'd love to see built on the platform, at least in my eyes, is kind of like a, it's just facilitating the transfer or payment for some of my services from, you know, crypto, uh, to fiat, I think there's a ton of possibilities and a ton of things that having some legitimacy on the platform is going to be able to serve. So I'm actually I'm looking forward to seeing kind of warmly develop and, and and seeing some of these projects come out. I think the possibilities are endless. I guess what I want to talk about now is, is some of the dancing you guys have had to do through some of the financial hoops. Clearly, KYC AML verification is pretty important. What exactly is this KYC verification? And ultimately, how is how is Wordly going to use it in order to create some insurance? So, uh, you know, AML KYC is the anti-money laundering, know your customer. So the first part is identity, right? You have to know who you're dealing with, who, who's basically tied to the account, who's the real world person. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, the somewhat difficult part is the AML, but we're contracting with a third party vendor who that's their expertise. Uh, so we've already signed off on all that. We're working on the integration right now with the user account. Uh, I want to make it a point. I know, you know, you and I have been talking about this, but there's some thought talk in the community that you have to go through AML KYC to be on Wordly. Not true. You can have a non-AML KYC account with us uh, without issue. Now, there might be dApps that require that verification that you won't be able to access, um, but there should be. Uh, numerous other ways for people to still get engaged uh, and participate in some of the other products and services on chain. Um, but the reason why you need this type of verification and compliance uh, for insurance, for example, is that, you know, there's a risk assessment. And of course, if you don't know your customer at all or your user, then the risk is effectively infinite. You, you, you don't know who you're dealing with, right? Uh, combined with that, though, you also need security auditing of some kind. You know, what we've been talking to different insurance companies that are interested in offering products, uh, not only for users, but for dApps and, and for the network foundation at large, is that if we have good security auditing protocols combined with the compliance, then the insurers can really assess risk. And once they can do that with probably a little bit of education around blockchain and what some of the potential risks are, uh, they're actually pretty excited to start offering some products and services. I think that that part of the verification is just kind of an, it's a, it's, you know, maybe a necessary evil, so to speak, in order to play a game with some of the banks in order to create kind of a fiat bridge to adoption and bring a little, bring, bring more people towards blockchain. I think that when you have these checks in place and you're able to insure assets and let people know that you can store your, you know, you can store your crypto assets here, that it's, it's going to, it's going to just ease the mind of a few different people and maybe change the way that we kind of start to perceive blockchain. We've all seen a lot of those hacks at the exchanges. They make a lot of headlines. It's not good PR for crypto. So I think that what you guys are doing is, is going to alleviate a lot of that. I think that that's a step in the right direction. As, as always, you know, we always kind of have these chats, but I, I like to play devil's advocate a little bit here in certain senses. So um, I've heard a lot of buzz going on about Wordly. It's kind of the new hot topic in a lot of the EO circles and, and, and even there outside of. But of course, I've spoken to a lot of people who are kind of the EOS purists. Um, and they've kind of indicated that I'm not one of these. I'm, I'm an EOS purist, but I'm of the belief that what you guys are doing is, is probably needed to uh, help encourage adoption. But what about for those people who say that 
maybe Warbly is kind of a, it's a 180 from some of the, some of the ideals that, that Dan Larimer had in mind when he was, when he was building EOS, um, you know, like what is, you know, maybe a little bit of a departure, so to speak, um, when decentralized power, I know that ultimately you do plan on decentralizing and that Warbly is going to be a bridge to fiat and, um, and probably an important one. What would you kind of say to some of those critics? Well, I think that, again, you know, we're a specific use case. Um, I don't think it takes anything away from mainnet whatsoever. Uh, we've uh, fostered uh, a very symbiotic relationship with mainnet, with mainnet stakeholders from, I think you'll see the block producers who are supporting us understand this, many of which are mainnet BPs and paid mainnet BPs. You know, um, we know that block one has an understanding of what we're doing. They get it. Uh, you can't do financial compliance on a wholly public blockchain, um, and it's needed, you know. So some of these decentralized applications uh, that can function in a completely decentralized environment, that's awesome. You know, we're, we're still blockchain people over here at Werbly, and we understand the value in that. But those applications, uh, many of which at the end of the day are going to need to be working businesses, profitable businesses, and they're going to have to conduct uh, financial transactions. And we think that we're, we're the best step uh, while maintaining compliance so that, uh, you know, financial governing bodies are not banging on people's doors six months, a year from now after all that hard work that they've put into building that app. And then next thing you know, they're, they're, they're running afoul of, of global compliance laws in, in whatever jurisdiction they're in. So uh, we think we offer a certain level of protection. But then again, there's always going to be uh, what we're calling the manual option for the, for the hardcore crypto user, um, where, where they can uh, do certain things and use certain services. And, and maybe they don't need us. You know, maybe they don't need uh, easy to use insured gateways that store your private keys. That's fine. They'll have that option. Those options exist already, right? But if we want to get a lot of these other mainstream users interested in blockchain, and I think blockchain's a lot bigger than things like decentralization and some of the concepts, blockchain's a revolution in a lot of ways. It's the way that many of us interact with one another the way we cooperate in building things together. There's a lot of aspects of blockchain that aren't just about uh, very specific technical aspects or decentralized nodes or things like that. And we think we're going to bring a lot of those users into the blockchain. And I think it's worth mentioning, of course, that you do have kind of a two-year roadmap to decentralization. You need the de decentralization thing to kind of set things up. Police assurances, the financial industry does not like uncertainty. So... I, I get it, and, and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing that roll out. I think it's going to be a cool process. I'm going to throw one more at you just because uh, I like to do this every once in a while. I had a discussion with somebody recently who had said something that and didn't quite make sense to me, and I just kind of want to hear your thoughts on it. You know, they had suggested that maybe Warbly could be sanctioned or shut down by a, a government in another country. I know you guys are going to have nodes and BPs in various countries, so it didn't really... I didn't really understand kind of when we spoke about it. What are your thoughts on that? Is it possible for a single government entity or somebody else to kind of shut down more of it? We're not aware of that type of risk. Uh, again, we're, we're taking the highest standards we can find and, and have done so in our development, uh, in creating the processes for compliances, compliance that we've created, um, which is really typically places like the United States and Europe. Uh, we're meeting or exceeding those standards at every turn. And I think what people maybe don't realize about these compliance bodies is they're not uh, witch hunts, right? These are still professional organizations uh, with people in them, and they have laws and rules too, <laughs> like due process and things like that. So, you know, it, intent is important, and I don't think people realize that. I know that sometimes... Uh, there's some serious wrongs that have maybe been perpetrated by uh, banks or governing bodies around the world. And I'm not saying they're not capable of some, some uh, harsh judgment on occasion, but for the most part, intention is important. And we've demonstrated that intention with everything we're doing, again, from the security audits and uh, having insurance products and the AML KYC that we're pretty confident that uh, 
we're not going to be looking at a scenario where somebody's going to flip a switch. And as you stated, we do have block producers all around the world supporting Warbly. Uh, by the time we're done, we're going to have 31 different nodes. Uh, we have nodes in South America, United States, uh, all over Asia, Australia, Africa, um, Europe. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to just turn a switch on Warbly. Uh, maybe they'll come after me as an individual, but, you know, I'm not Warbly. You know, uh, I'm just one person who's part of the project. So I'll take my chances. Okay, That's a pretty good answer. And it was just kind of an interesting conversation that I had. I hear a lot of positive things, don't get me wrong, but I just, I wanted to throw those at you because I want to try to stay as objective as possible. And sure. Just give you, a, give you an opportunity to kind of speak to the community and, and answer a few other questions out there. Now let's get down to kind of the nuts and the bolts. I know you're, I know you guys are huge EOS supporters. You've been in the community for a long time. You're part of the community and you're not trying to take down EOS as such, right? Um, rather create a cooperative environment where you can do things that EOS might not be otherwise capable of given the current set of standards. So what exactly can Warbly do that maybe EOS might not be able to for these reasons? Well, again, I think that, uh, you know, when we originally started taking a look at creating a bank, uh, the consensus from every uh, attorney or uh, accounting firm that we were working with or people in the compliance industry that are part of the project, they said, you know, it can't be done on a fully public blockchain. Um, you know, you have to know who the nodes are even to meet compliance, right? Um, the, the nodes are processing transactions. They're providing the compute power and the bandwidth in the situation of EOS to the network. And if you don't know who those people are and what they're doing with their money, um, that could run you uh, afoul of global com compliance laws. Um, you also need uh, certain processes and procedures in place um, at a sort of governance level. One of the reasons why EOS actually facilitates the ability to do this uh, is the governance layer. Um, but again, we can't really hold that up for a vote. I mean, it would be great if everyone on... Uh, mainnet decided that AML KYC compliance could be a feature of the chain that users could sign up for, um, you know, and then they would have the proper storage of those documents and everything all baked in. But even if that got voted in, we'd also have to have assurances that it would be, it would stay that way. Um, because again, you're not going to get um, financial businesses to, take the risk of coming onto a blockchain that may or may not be compliant in the future. So it's not only about the present, but it's about the future, providing that type of assurance to the businesses that we're talking to that really has them excited. Uh, the conversations we've had with so many companies is basically we've been waiting for something like this because they didn't want to all spin up their own chains. They'd taken a look at that stuff. They realized the infrastructure and the costs and just the, to the headaches involved in running your own blockchain. Um, but they'd love to deploy on a network that, that's pre-existing that meets these requirements. 100%. I, I read a recent article by EOS Dublin, and we'll talk about some of your block producers and kind of some of the guys who got lined up here in a little bit. But I, I read a, a recent article, which I thought was pretty interesting, and they kind of referred to Warbly as like the financial district of EOS. You know, is, do you think that that's accurate? And if so, in what capacity? I'd say that that's absolutely our aspiration. Um, I was using the term like the Wall Street of EOS, and then Sharif came up with uh, the financial district, which I think is better. Maybe Wall Street is not uh, doesn't have a lot of love out there. Um, but you know, we're working actively on things like IBC ourselves with our own funds. Uh, we know it's on Block One's roadmap, but we don't know when. Yeah, you know, I'll just say that it can't happen fast enough for us. We want users to be able to move between. Uh, the mainnet and Warbly and and potentially other uh, sister chains that might develop out there for use cases. You know, uh, for example, I've said, you know, I have a, a, a medical background in my previous life and I think there's room for an EOS chain that does like medical records and sensitive um, healthcare, like telemedicine and things like that. Um, so I think there's use cases uh, for uh, sister chains in the future and it, we know Warbly isn't isn't the first and isn't going to be the last. Um, so you know, um, I think all of this really ultimately benefits. And in our case, we hope to be that 
that financial district that everybody can just connect to easily and provide all the various financial services products that EOS needs to thrive. 100%. I think that if I can finally have a product where I can easily transfer fiat, I can kind of keep everything in one, you know, my crypto assets along with my banking assets in an insured environment. I think that that's kind of a win for me. It's something I'm definitely interested in, of course. And we've spoken a lot about that before. Now let's get into uh, something that I'm sure a lot of people have been asking about. I was one of those people, of course, right? Um, I know that the new chain is going to facilitate, you guys can't force anybody to do this, but you're going to facilitate the use of airdrops, perhaps, that will happen in the same way that EOS does airdrops. What are you, kind of, what are you guys kind of doing to facilitate or coordinate that possibility? And am I kind of accurate when I say that you ultimately will be encouraging some of the dApps that build on the system to be able to do something like this? Absolutely. So I can say that anything that we're incubating from the foundation will be doing airdrops on Warbly token holders. Uh, anything that's funded by the Warbly network fund, uh, we're going to make that a requirement. And then we're certainly going to encourage the dApps that build on chain. Now, we don't feel comfortable making it mandatory. Um, it's just, you know, again, as much as we may be catching some flack for people calling us, you know, centralized and all of that stuff, uh, you know, we are trying to provide as much freedom as possible for entrepreneurs, um, you know, that, that aren't directly associated or, or funded by the foundation. But anything that basically flows through the foundation or is funded by the network, uh, we'll be doing airdrops. And I think that it's a, it's a great distribution uh, model for, for, for crypto businesses. So I just, I don't see why most, most dApps on chain won't be doing it. But again, it's not something I think we can make mandatory in good conscience. I totally get it. You, uh, you can build a, you can build the ecosystem, but you can't, you can't force people to partake in certain things. Of course. I think a lot, a lot will, and um, I think there will be some that won't for, for obvious reasons. Moving on next, I guess you guys have uh, you guys have an airdrop or a share drop, as it's so defined, kind of coming up soon. What are the what are the requirements to claim that account? I think a lot of people are under the impression that they have to do uh, the KYC in order to do so, and as I understand, that's not quite accurate. How's it all going to work? When is the share drop? And and can you kind of just chat about some of the some of the ways that this is all going to go down? Yeah. So the the share drops happening on eleven one, uh, November first of this year, and that's when our user portal will be live. So we've really we built a portal for this purpose. It's really the beginning of the user account, so it has kind of two use cases. But we knew that we'd need to help automate the process of generating an account on our chain again because we're a sister chain. Uh, uh, a fork, if you will. Um, you know, you, you, we can't just airdrop on mainnet wallets. Um, so we have to get users to come over and open accounts. Um, it will not require AML KYC. AML KYC is required to unlock part of the share drop. We're not being shy about it. We want users to do AML KYC. It's a big part of the purpose of our chain, but you can unlock uh, at least 65% of your tokens uh, without doing AML KYC. And you can wait. You're going to have up to a year to do it. Um, so you, if you want to wait and just see what kind of dApps come online uh, on the network that require it, um, and maybe you then get excited about it, then, then you can do it then. You know, no one's going to be forcing you to do it right away. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, you just, you know, you're going to, oh, the, the portal. So uh, the portal is just going to be putting in your public key, you know, that's going to help you generate your Wordly account. We're not going to be taking any of your private keys. Those will all be stored on the, on the user's local device. That's how you're going to unlock your account. You're going to get your one-to-one -one from our September 7th snapshot uh, and, and your, your Wordly account will be created. Uh, the other thing about the share drop that we figured out is, you know, if you had any tokens like staking or anything like that, when we did the snapshot, those will be credited, no problem. And we are working on a solution for multiple accounts. It might not be ready right away at 11.1, but we'll be crediting your account at some point, your sort of main account. So if, if you want to do the AML KYC to kind of have a chance at unlocking 100% of the tokens, you're going to designate that as like your main account. And if you have these other multiple accounts, we're going to eventually 
have a way for you to merge those into one so that you can get, right? Because you can only do AML KYC once. Uh, if you had five accounts, then that would mean that four accounts, even if you wanted to do AML KYC, all of the tokens wouldn't get unlocked. But we're going to have a solution for that so you can get all of your tokens. Awesome. Let's talk about block producers. I know you guys have got some really quality uh, block producers and some well-known block producers lined up. Who are they? Um, have you kind of established all of them? And um, can you just kind of give us a breakdown of some of the interactions and some of the people you're bringing on board? Sure. So we have 21 that are going to be kind of uh, getting the chain going. And those are our, our active block producers. And then we have 10 reserve block producers. We're finalizing the 10 reserve block producers by the end of this coming week. Uh, I think we only have about three uh, spots left. Uh, the, but the top 21 has been set for a few weeks. We're slowly rolling out the announcements. Uh, so far we have EOS Metal, EOS Sphere, EOS Rio, Infinity Block, EOS Tribe, Generos, EOS Dublin, and EOS New York. Um, but there's a lot more that uh, I think everybody's going to be quite familiar with that will be making announcements in the next few weeks. Cool. I'm looking forward to saying that. And it sounds like you've got some, some good names there as well. So uh, I recently spoke to, um, spoke to quite a few of those guys. And uh, I like the list. It sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I want to talk about the roadmap a little bit, I guess. Um, what's close? What's near? And what has you really excited? So what's close is definitely the launch, right, uh, in, the, in the airdrop portal, which really is the beginning of the public network. You know, so that's 11.1. Uh, by the end of the year, we expect to have at least, uh, our goal is six dApps deployed. Uh, I think we'll meet or exceed that fairly easily. Uh, so that's sort of through the end of the year. Beginning of next year is really going to be all about the bank in developing that, that product. I think people will be excited. We're actually revising the white paper right now, and we'll definitely be making that public before uh, the public network launch on November 1st. Uh, but we actually had some really creative ideas uh, about how we want to do it. And so we've really changed our model for the bank. But what I like about it is I, I believe it's something that a lot of people in crypto are going to be able to uh, mimic. And we absolutely will welcome it. Uh, it's going to be a kind of a repeatable model uh, that really helps get around some of the uh, more expensive and strict banking licenses that you need in various countries in order to perform the services of a bank. And I think we have a creative approach that allows us to still do it in an, you know, an absolutely compliant way, but without having to have these extremely expensive, what are typically called like class A banking licenses in the United States that can cost 10 to $20 million and take two years to get. Uh, we have a way to basically have all the function of, of a bank without needing that license sure I think that there's definitely a need in the industry to allow small businesses to be able to and large businesses as well of course to be able to transact in uh, crypto assets that's kind of something that Warbly is ultimately facilitating or will ultimately facilitate yeah absolutely um, you know the, the, the transaction and the uh, the crypto asset like custodianship is a big deal right now um, and insurance is really uh, the, one of the biggest factors, you know, I think in, in, in that whole game. Um, you need insurance. You know, it's just not palatable that somebody loses a private key or deletes one or something like that and then they lose all of their value. For sure. I think that that's one thing that we're kind of missing. I think that you can do it right now, but I think it's incredibly expensive. And something that we talked about in the pre-talk is the way that you're looking to kind of create a system where it's a – Instead of, you know, where it's a grab for the highest fees, you know, people are ultimately comp competing to be able to give people the, the lowest fees possible. And hopefully that's something that Wordly is going to be able to facilitate and accommodate. And of course, with that will come adoption. So, I'm, uh, you know, that's one of the things that kind of uh, has me very interested and of course has a, you know, I have my eyes on as well. Uh, I guess I know that we have, um, there's a conference coming up at the end of the month. And the only reason why I know that is because um, I was asked to, to be a member of the panel there. What exactly is that conference about? What are you guys trying to accomplish with that? And what are the details? Yeah, so uh, we decided that we wanted to host a little online conference to talk about some of the stuff that's going on in Werbly, but also just to make a contribution to EOS. You know, I was inspired by the EOS Ignite conference. Yeah. Uh, by, you know, June from the EOS community. I think he did a great job. 
Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I was part of uh, the conference myself, but really watched so many other people. And, you know, with the technology available to us, we can do these things. You know, we can get online. It's very accessible. I mean, it's nice to show up for, like, the hackathons in London and all that. But not a lot of people, unless you live local to London, uh, you know, can afford the flights and accommodations and maybe the time off from work. Um, so I think these online conferences serve a real good purpose. So we've got uh, various panels. Uh, the conference is uh, September 30th at the end of the month. And we're going to be definitely talking about Werbly. We have a panel from our block producers to just talk a little bit about, again, why they're supporting, supporting Werbly, uh, what it's like being a block producer in general on mainnet. You know, they're going to be riffing about just kind of different topics around being a block producer. Um, decentralized organizations and governance. We're going to dive into that a little bit. Um, talk about inter-blockchain communication, uh, which is, again, something that's big for us, but I think big for the whole industry, really, all of blockchain, you know, we hope to see IBC everywhere, you know, not just between EOS chains, but we're working on a project with BitShares, for example. Um, so we're going to be talking about IBC and then a little bit about like the future, you know, what, what, what is the end user ultimately looking for? What, what are the people of the panel will be talking about? You know, what do they think they're looking for? How are we going to get to adoption? What are the, the different challenges there, uh, that sort of thing. For sure. I'm, I guess I'm looking for a little bit of juice here. Give me something fresh. I want to, what, what do people, what's something kind of about warmly that your typical user or maybe the majority of people don't really know or understand? You know, something that, that a lot of people aren't familiar with? Well, I think that uh, probably something that's, that's relatively fresh is we started talking to a third-party security auditing firm that we're forming a partnership with that's actually going to do a security audits for the dApps coming on chain. And this is something we haven't published yet or spoken about. Um, and we're finding a way to get that cost absorbed so that the dApps don't even have to pay for it. Um, you know, the recent hack with EOS Bet, you know, just that's like today or yesterday's headlines. Um, uh, overnight, depending on your time zone. But, um, you know, this is, again, it's a problem. And having insurance is great, but ultimately preventing these things in the first place is even better, right? Because uh, insurance premiums are going to go through the roof if hacks are just a normal, you know, cost of doing business, so to speak. Um, so we're contracting a firm that's going to be doing a sort of security auditing of smart contracts and things like that, as well as just penetrating penetration testing. So I think what a lot of people don't realize, a fair amount of adapt still going to be just hosted on the web. You know, there's a web app or a mobile app that's running on Android or iOS. You know, there, there are still vulnerabilities, just regular vulnerabilities. And just because, again, it's crypto and there's value transfer going on or, again, people's, you know, wallets uh, maybe being um, accessed, stuff like that, um, we want to make sure that people are safe. You know, really the biggest part of adoption, make it easy to use, sure, but no matter how easy it is to use, if it's dangerous, we really don't think the average person is going to take a long look at crypto until they feel confident that they're not going to get ripped off. 100%. I agree with that. I guess you, uh, it's weird because you're doing, it's not weird, it's just you're doing a lot of groundbreaking things and a lot of things that haven't really been done. You know, I mean, Warbly in essence is a culmination of, of uh, a lot of different ideas, you know, with kind of a fiat crypto bridge what's what's the most exciting thing about working on this what really gets you wrapped up what do you really enjoy and what are you most passionate about the, about the whole process well I, I i think for me it's access um it, it is not only bringing more people to blockchain but it's creating access for a lot of the people in the uh sort of underserved parts of the world that um you know haven't had access to financial services for example at all and we think we're going to be able to uh, create availability uh, for sort of the underbanked and unbanked. Um, in addition, and we talked about this a little bit too, is I think that the individuals are going to have access to a lot of different investment products that have not normally been available for the mainstream or non-institutional uh, user or unaccredited investor, right? You know, we live in a world where the wealthy kind of easily get wealthier. And part of that's that capital uh, uh, can make money uh, unto itself without 
the need for your labor. Your money can sort of make money for you while you sleep. But really, another component of that is that they have access to things like insurance bonds and, and things like that that have very, very predictable and low risk uh, to them, uh, predictable returns and low risk. Um, and that's just not something that the average individual can get involved in right now. But decentralized insurance applications, for example, will make that accessible. Uh, much like ICOs allowed individuals to kind of get in at the, the VC level, right? The seed level of a project uh, where, again, unless you knew the founders in the traditional world, you weren't going to probably be able to do that or you had to be an accredited investor or something like that, you know, um, we think there's going to be accessibility to a lot of various uh, investment products for individuals. Yeah, we talked about that. That's cool. It is cool. That is cool because, as you said, a lot of people don't have access to this. And for a lot of people, it's, a, it's kind of a game changer you know, to have access to um, some of these types of, you know, we spoke about kind of potentially insurance bonds and stuff like that. You know, your average Joe who works his butt off at work every single week and, you know, maybe scrapes by but has an, has an extra whatever it might be. Maybe it's 100 bucks that you can put into something that, you know, that's going to provide a, a good return as opposed to putting it into his bank account where he gets 0, 0.0 and killed with fees, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it, Dominic. Uh, I'm also looking forward, of course, to that conference. I'm going to make sure I put links to everything below, and, um, and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing the product develop, see it roll out. Do you have any final words to the EOS community before I, before I send you on your way to do your thing? Any final plugs or anything you're interested in talking about or just anything you want to say to the community in general? Uh, just that we hope that as many people as possible participate in the share drop. You know, Werbly.io is the website. That's that's where it's going to be. That, that'll that be where the portal lives, uh, or at least the link to get there. And, uh, you know, if you want to sign up with your email, we can keep you updated. Uh, and, yeah, just uh, come on over, you know, get an account on Werbly, and, and let's see what we can do together. You bet. It's a pleasure talking to you as always. I hope we can do this again sometime soon. I look forward to that conference on the 30th and uh, just look forward to seeing kind of horribly unfold and, uh, and seeing you know, what you guys can do with this. Cause I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be cool. And I'm, I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely watching. I know a lot of other people are too. So you have yourself a fantastic day, Dominic. Thanks so much for talking to me and, uh, and we'll catch up soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks for having me. Cheers, buddy. Bye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.